Hi, I'm Rachel Seitz. I'm the Landowner Outreach and Stewardship Manager for Hill Country Alliance. I'm Dr. Angela England with Texas Parks and Wildlife's Inland Fisheries Division with the Watershed Conservation Team. Hi, my name is Gabby Tamez. I'm the Watershed Conservation Specialist with Inland Fisheries. We're here today with Gabby and Angela to talk about a couple common invasive or problematic plant species found in and along hill country creeks and rivers. So in this video, we'll talk about how to identify these plants, uh, the problems that they pose, and resources and methods for treating these plants. So let's hear from Angela on our first plant, Arundo Donax. Well, Angela, thanks so much for coming out today. Great, I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Well, before we get started, would you mind kind of telling us about your job as a conservation biologist? Sure. I am lucky enough to work with the Healthy Creeks Initiative project. We are managing Arundo Donax in the headwaters of the Upper Blanco, Guadalupe, Medina, Llano, and Pedernales. We've got um, Arundo in all these locations and we are working in native fish conservation areas to try to get um, the habitat improved for these fish. Okay, so Arundo Donax, is that your priority plant species that you're, going, that you're treating with the Healthy Creeks Initiative? Right, that's the main one we're working on right now. We're mapping others, but this is, this is the one we're treating. Okay, well since we're in front of a large patch, would you mind kind of walking us through how to best identify this plant? Sure. Well, it's a grass that is native to Asia and introduced to the United States. It grows 10 to 20 feet tall and has these broad, long leaves, kind of like corn as well as thick stems uh, or canes, similar to sugarcane or bamboo. Most people think of it as bamboo. So long spear-shaped leaves and a thick stalk kind of like bamboo or sugarcane. You know, I think I see, I see a lot of this when I'm driving around the hill country. Could you tell us about some of the problems that this plant causes when it's in our Texas waterways? Sure, it forms these dense thickets that can crowd out the native biodiversity of plants. Um, it really can take over these stream banks and crowd into the waterways, and its roots are not very good at holding the soil in place. It also has such a hot, fast growth rate, up to four inches a day, that it needs lots of water to do that. So it sends uh, its roots down into the soil and into the streams, and pulls it right out and pumps it into the atmosphere and then it's lost for our fish and our creeks. Wow, so it reduces water flow and kind of crowds out native plants and wildlife. Anything else? It's extremely flammable. Um, all parts of the plants are flammable and so it can allow a wildfire to come in and burn really hot and even jump the creeks that you would normally expect to stop the, fl the flames. Wow, so it's clear that it's important to take care of this plant and mitigate it. So if I'm a landowner and I find this on my property or in my waterway, um, what's the best way for me to mitigate or address this plant? Right, so a lot of people want to try to cut it, mow it, or dig it out, but we don't recommend disturbing the stream banks because that'll lead to additional erosion. Instead, the best manner is to treat it with a herbicide that is labeled for use in aquatic sites. Um, if you cut it, you get fragments that just spread downstream or even closer nearby you, and we don't want more fragments. We don't want more patches growing up. Well, Angela, thank you so much for coming out today. Happy to be here. Awesome. Well, just a quick recap. Arundo is a 10 to 20 foot tall invasive species of grass, and it has these long spear-shaped leaves and a thick stalk, kind of like sugarcane or bamboo. When it comes to treating or mitigating Arundo on your property, the best method is to use an herbicide that's labeled as safe for aquatic use. And that's actually available at no cost to landowners in select project areas through the Healthy Creeks Initiative. Yeah. So if you're interested in learning a bit more about this project, this initiative, please check out the link in the comments below. Um, you can also find out what areas are covered by the Healthy Creeks Initiative for this Arundo treatment. Alrighty, well, we're going to head over to a second site to learn about our next plant, Elephant Ear, from Gabby Tamez. 
Well, Gabby, thanks so much for hopping into the river with us today. Yeah, of course. I'm glad to be here. So we are in front of an elephant ear stand. Would you mind telling us a bit about this plant? Of course. So elephant ear are a common nursery ornamental that are native to Asia. Um, they were introduced to the U.S. in the 1900s. They have this large, broad, heart-shaped uh, leaf. They have a thick stem and they grow from bulbs. Um, you'll most likely find them in riparian areas that are moist and shady, like along swamps and creeks and river edges. They grow from rhizomes and plant fragments. Okay, so large heart-shaped leaves attached to thick stalks. That's how you ID it. Mm -hmm. So what are some issues that we should be aware of when it comes to having elephant ear in our waterways? Well, as you can see here, elephant ear will tend to grow in these large monocultures which shade out native competition, further reducing native biodiversity. These large monocultures degrade native habitat for wildlife species like wading shorebirds or various native plants and aquatic uh, wildlife. They also weaken banks and destabilize your soils, which reduce your, your property's resiliency during a flood. Okay, so it's kind of similar to a rundo in that it can crowd out native plants and wildlife and cause erosion issues when a flood comes through. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so if I had elephant ear in my waterway, how would you recommend best managing this plant? Well, our best management practice would be to use an herbicide that is labeled safe for aquatic use. And if you have any questions about using an herbicide, we ask that you contact us at HCI. So just a quick recap of what we learned from Gabby. This here is elephant ear. It's a common invasive plant species found along Texas waterways and you can easily identify it by looking for large heart-shaped leaves attached to thick stalks underneath. As far as management, we recommend using an herbicide that's labeled as safe for aquatic use. Well, thank you so much, Angela and Gabby, for coming out. Yeah. In this video, we learned about Arundo and Elephant Ear. We talked about how to identify these plants, some problems that they pose, and resources and methods for managing these plants. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at the address on the screen. And if you'd like to learn more about stewarding your riparian landscape, go ahead and check out our Grow Zone video. Thank you and take care.